What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about a newly discovered, large-scale, well-organized phishing as a service operation. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Microsoft uncovered a large-scale, well-organized and sophisticated phishing as a service operation. The turnkey platform allows users to customize campaigns and develop their own phishing ploys so they can then use the phishing as a service platform, otherwise known as FAS, to help with phishing kits, email templates, and hosting services needed to launch attacks. This investigation led them down a rabbit hole as they unearthed one of the operations that enabled the campaign. With more than 100 available phishing templates that mimic known brands and services, including Microsoft itself, the Bulletproof Link operation is responsible for many of the phishing campaigns that impact enterprises today. Phishing is a common way for cyber criminals to do people through socially engineered emails into giving up their credentials to online accounts that can store sensitive data. Fishers use these emails, which sometimes fool people by impersonating a trusted company or an application or an institution, to direct people to, spe uh, to specially crafted phishing sites so they can enter their credentials thinking they're doing so for a legitimate reason. Phishing is often a gateway drug into the other criminal activities that exist. Fishers sell credentials obtained through campaigns on the dark web, and they can be used by ransomware gangs as an entry point into networks to deliver ransomware attacks among other nefarious activities. Now, if you have not yet watched my full episode on phishing, I highly recommend it. The link is above. In that episode, I go through all the most common variations of phishing, including spear phishing, whaling, vishing, and more. Now, I also pinned the link in the comment section below, and it'll be at the in the end credits of this video. So you have plenty of opportunities to watch it after this episode, of course. Bulletproof Link, also known as Bulletproof Link and Anthrax by its operators uh, in various websites, ads, and other promotional materials, provides a starting point for people without significant resources to get into the phishing business. The group has been active since 2018 and maintains multiple sites under aliases. The group leverages services such as YouTube and Vimeo, offering instructional videos, advertisements, and promotional materials. It is known to hook their wares on a plethora of underground forums. While previously, criminals who wanted to launch these types of attacks had to build their own phishing emails and brand impersonating, pers uh, impersonating websites on their own, the phishing landscape has evolved its own service-based economy. Now attackers can just purchase all the resources and other infrastructure they need to launch phishing attacks without the investment of a lot of time, effort, and m their own money. Hello. What's that? A robot with an electronic brain? Well, send one right over. There are two key offerings that are available to criminals who want to get into the phishing business, fish kits and phishing as a service. Now, I hope you understand that this episode is not trying to sell you into doing this. This is trying to explain it to you, even though sometimes these things read a little weird. The first, which is phishing kit, are packaged files that are sold on a one-time basis that come with ready-to-use email phishing templates designed to evade detection and are often accompanied by a portal with which to access them, researchers explain. The kits, an example of which is the Merc Boot Fish Kit, allow people to set up the websites and purchase the domain names they need to launch phishing campaigns. The second offering, which is Phishing as a Service, otherwise known as FAS, is similar to Ransomware as a Service, or RAS, and which also is a popular way for cyber criminals to get into the game without making their own significant investment. Can you imagine building your own ransomware network? Well, there's Ransomware as a Service where you could just pay for access or, um, you know, split the profits. 
Now, FAS, is the, which is the bread and butter of bulletproof links operation, follows the software as a service model. Attackers pay an operator to develop turnkey phishing campaigns that include everything from false sign in page development to website hosting to credential parsing and redistribution. Researchers took a deeper dive into Bulletproof Link's FAS operation to uncover how the group has created a flourishing network of fishers. Like any service provider, the group explains on an About Us page on its site the services it provides, including the sale of a unique scan page, as well as a monthly hosted subscription service to set up a customer's phishing operation. In fact, the group hosts multiple sites to service customers, including an online store where customers can register, sign in, and advertise their hosted service for monthly subscriptions. The monthly service costs as much as $800 a month, while other services cost about $50 bucks for a one-time hosting link, uh, researchers found, with Bitcoin being a common payment method on the Bulletproof Link site. The organization even uses the typical service provider tactic of offering a 10% welcome discount on customers' orders when they subscribe to its newsletter. Please, gadgets. Hey, what is this? Isn't that something? Now, an interesting point about the FAS working model Bulletproof Link uses is that it follows the RAS model's method of double extortion, or in this case, double theft, as researchers describe. In ransomware, this method generally involves attackers exfiltrating and posting data publicly in addition to encrypting them on compromised devices to put pressure on organizations or people to pay the ransom. A similar workflow also is present in the economy of stolen credentials in Bulletproof Link's FAST model. The group includes a secondary location in its phishing kit for credentials to be sent once they're required. In cases where the attackers using the service received credentials and logs at the end of a week instead of, a, of conducting campaigns themselves, the FAST operator maintained control of all the credentials that they resell. Now, in both REST and FAST, then, the operators supplying resources to facilitate attacks, they maximize monetization by assuring stolen data, access, and credentials are put to use in as many ways as possible. This also ensures that stolen credentials are likely to end up in the underground economy. So, what did we learn? Um, I think a key to this story, at least for me, is that for everything that we know about the deep dark world of cybercrime, there's still plenty we have yet to discover. I mean, we know about Revel and Ryok and, you know, now Max Trilla and Bulletproof Link, partially because of the videos I'm producing for you, but that really is just the tip of the iceberg. How many organizations like this in phishing, malware, ransomware, rootkits exist that have not yet been fully understood? The global cybersecurity community is really not that large yet or large enough to be able to sift through real-time data on a global scale and find them all. Then, when, let's say, one disappears and a new one arrives, we're starting over again in terms of wrapping our heads around the reach and capacity that this new player has. For me, this translates into more evidence that we as CTOs, CSOs, red teams, and really anyone in IT, we need to be more proactive and integrate stricter controls and defenses. We need better locks on our IT front doors. But mark my words, help is coming. There are companies popping up left and right, getting massive funding, who are tackling these issues. In the coming weeks and months, you'll hear about a few elite companies that have real solutions for you, and I will share them with you. What else did we learn? Um, the malicious services are becoming enterprises in their own right. They're well-organized, they're professional, and they have one goal, to separate you from your money. This phishing as a service org has over 100 phishing templates that mimic known brands, including Microsoft. So even though we trust Microsoft, well, I mean, we kind of, right? And not really. Um, we still need to look at every email we receive with suspicion, no matter who it's from. So not just the African prince's son who's going to get you to help him get out of Africa with his $30 billion, but the security department at Microsoft. Yes, please. I am to help you here. You account have problem. Yes, reset password. 
I think Microsoft can spell better than that. In fact, I know they can. So you have to be careful. Keep your eyes open. Be aware. Be alert. Make multiple checks, especially for emails that you're not expecting. Invoices you might not be expecting. Uh, you know, resumes from you might not be expecting. Or people trying to communicate with you for some type of business opportunity. You need to triple check before you start clicking on links and entering any credentials. So with that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And if you haven't already, smash the bells to be alerted when I upload a new episode. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.